Good evening, my name is Rudy, and tonight we're going to discuss the refined advisors. Now, the refined advisors mainly used for um, CFDs, or you can use use it for equities as well, but it's mainly focused on trading CFDs on the uh, trader dashboard. Okay, so where to find it? It's underneath analysis. And then from analysis, you go to stocks, and then under stocks, it will go and sit underneath the additional advisors. Now, under the additional advisors, you'll see that there is an extra um, block here that says share track in 2020. So this option basically allows you to see which shares are currently in a long or which shares are currently in a short position for you to go and open on the market. Now, of course, you can, you've got a wide range of other advisors to assist you in the, on the share track and additional advisors, but the share track and 2020 advisor is for, is the refined advisor tab. So once you click on that option, it's going to load through all the shares on the JSC. And then once it's done, it's going to give you two blocks on the right hand side. So it's going to give you the same as, as per usual, the code of the, the share, the company name, the uh, closing price in RAND, the volume that it's traded, and then the share track and 2020 advisor, which will give you either an open position or a hold position, and then the direction if it's a long or a short. Okay, so on the share track in 2020, um, underneath that, you're only going to type in one word, which is open, and it's going to give you all the open positions for the day. So it will filter out all the open positions for the day. Um, so for instance, it will give you ABG, Absa Group Limited, with the price, the volume, and then the position is open. Uh, so it's telling you that you can go and open a position if you want to, but firstly, you need to go and do your technical analysis, which is key. So always remember to do technical analysis before you open a position, okay? Um, and then the direction it would be either long or short. So long position being trading in an upwards direction or short position trading in a downwards, downwards direction, okay? So once you've entered your word open um, and you, you've selected your share, click on the share, and then as per usual, go to Charts IQ and it will open the Charts IQ tab, okay? So this will give you um, the chart for that share then that you've clicked on. So as uh, per Share Track and Basic 2, we've already added the um, the RSI and the stochastics, so by this time you should be used to um, what the signals would look like. So when the red and the black line cross in the upwards direction, it would be a buying indication. When they cross in the downwards direction, that would be a selling indication. So buying and selling indications are really important um, if it comes to CVDs. So what I mean by that is if I pull this chart to the model quickly. A normal position we would open, for instance, down there. Okay, so that would be a long position buying a share when it's going upwards. Okay, um, so when the when the lines cross in, in a bullish trend, that would be basically your buying indication for going in a bullish trend. Okay, but then if you want to go short with a share, then we can, the selling indications would be really important, okay? Reason being is that you can trade in a down, downwards direction as well, basically trading against the company and not for the company. So a good position for a long would have been, for instance, over here, where the share price started to grow and you would have sold out right over there. So that would have been a normal buy and sell opportunity, okay? When it comes to trading CVDs, you can trade downwards as well. So that means that I can buy up here and then go sell way down there. Or I could have closed the position over here before the share price went up again. Okay. So that means that instead of looking at a crossover in a bullish trend, I would have looked at a crossover in a downwards trend to be able to place a short. Okay. Um, so if you're trading with Standard Bank, obviously there would be one of two options, uh, either a buy or a sell. A buy order would be a long position and a, and a sell order would be a short position. Okay, but currently this is a long position telling us that we could have put in a trade today, this morning, and then we, or, or, or yeah, basically this morning we could have open, opened a trade and then, or yesterday even, we could, not yesterday, Friday, sorry. So on Friday we could have opened a trade and then more or less closed it today if we really wanted to, but obviously it, 
it, the share has still got some potential to grow. Okay, um, so it means that that the share hasn't in, ended basically the long means that you can trade with it for at least the next week or the next two weeks. Okay, so it's not like equities where you will stay in for let's say a month, two months, six months, a year, three years, five years, ten years, um, depending on on how long the growth is of that specific share. Um, so normal equity would be a longer term where with a CV you'd buy here, yeah, sell there, so that's over a week's time you would have bought and sold. Okay, so because it's the, the growth um, basically you you would be trading with the spike of the share okay so other things that we can also have a look at when we're looking at the um, buying indication for for a share like abg would be a converging trend between that point there and that point there so it means that there's still potential the rsi is still going up so relative strength index is telling us that that, that this share is still still going up Okay, so the relative strength is still in a bullish trend, so we can still place an order for ABG, even though the price um, flows negatively for today. The opening price was was higher than what Friday's was. Okay, so it looks like there's some potential for this shit to grow even further. Okay, with that convert converting a trend and the confirmation on the stochastic telling us that yes we might be able to buy there's other things as well that you can go and put in to make your your buy um, easier for instance like the macd which is underneath studies macd which stands for moving average conversions and diversions so it looks a little bit different to what your um, rsi and stochastic does um, it's only got one zero line running straight through the graph so there's a zero line straight through the graph. Now that zero line basically just separates your overbought and your oversold area areas. Same with your um, stochastic and your RSI, which has got a 20 and 80 oversold, overbought area, oversold, overbought area. Okay. So with a MACD it just runs with a zero line. Now basically how it works is it's the same principle when the black line and the red line crosses in a bullish trend then you would place a buy order okay so for instance if we have to go back down here that would have been a buying indication and then we can see that stochastic um, gave a buy indication just beforehand and after and then our RSI gave the buying indication over there and beforehand it also gave a buying indication. MACD is basically the main confirmation then between between these two telling you that yes there is a converting trend. So instead of using the conversions and diversions lines which I usually teach people to use, um, you can use that as an indication that the share is going to start growing once that once the red and the black line cross over because basically what the macd is is these converting lines so there's a convergence between that point and that point convergence between that point and that point which means that that point would have been the would have been the perfect time to buy because there's a converging trend and the macd basically just confirmed those two extra lines that are put in Okay, um, so from there, the share price spiked. You could have kept on to the share up until there. That's a quick buying indication. So that's a long position. A short position would, would look the other way around. So you'd have a selling indication there, selling indication there, selling indication there, all three of them basically telling you to sell. But then same thing, you've, you've got your diverging lines. So there's a divergence in the price. So you'll see that the RSI keeps on bouncing on that diverting line that diverting line is basically mainly what the MACD does okay so once there's a, a crossover downwards it means that it's following that trend okay so up until a certain point so you would have put in a short position there and then closed the position position down here because the lines basically cro uh, at crossovers again okay crossing upwards indicating that there might be a, some potential for going up all right, so sometimes it might not work. All right, for instance, you'll see that there's two crossovers over there, but there's nothing on the MACD. All right, MACD is still going down, but your price had a movement upwards. Okay, so sometimes the MACD does not work in that sense. So MACD would be mainly used also for if you're doing investments, but you can use it for trades if you really want to go um, and confirm your indications. But mainly, I don't really use the MACD. I rather just pull in the lines myself because MACD is sometimes a little uh, sluggish or right? it is a, it is, can be, can be that it's a week um, behind the RSI and stochastic so we call that a lagging indicator okay so it's always behind 
All right. So focusing on on the current indication, which would be a long indication. Okay, and that's exactly what it told us that it's a open position for a long. It were, if it was a short, we would have traded downwards. Now opening a position is rather easy. All you do is you click on your on your share once again, buy shares, and then you trade change it to your CFD account. Okay, now on the CFD account you'll see that there's a few different things towards what your normal simulation is. Okay, your normal simulation will ask you number of shares to trade, and then your comments. And obviously, you'll be you will need to keep to the rule uh, or stick to the rule that your break-even point needs to be below four percent on a simulation account. But with a CFD account, it's a little bit different. Okay, meaning that you're trading with leverages and margins. So leverage and margin is something that would be extra. So this we will explain in the CFD and video there is already cv um, videos available if you want to understand what the leverage and the margin is but was basically what it comes down to is that for instance if you're trading through standard bank then you'd get a leverage anything between one and ten okay so a, a share can have a leverage of for instance five all right i know the financial institute life instance apps are group limited that would be anything uh over Was seven, all right? So let's say eight. Okay, so seven point eight leverage that will give us and so on. All right, moles. So it's twelve point eight two percent. We've got some issues there with the audio. I do apologize. Um, so with with the the margin percent percentage, you're only going to pay twelve point eight two percent of the original price. So the so you're not going to pay full price per share, but the the share movement would usually be on the main price okay but you're going to pay a cheaper cheaper price um, because of the leverage all right so what the leverage basically does is if i have to take 100 shares on apsa then it means that i would be paying one 1842 rand and uh, 69 cents but my exposure would be 14000 rand so it's basically multiplying um the 1.8 um, on my leverage or gearing ratio by my required margin to give me a total cost but total cost obviously includes your 50 rand brokerage fee as well okay so 50 rand brokerage is already um, added on added on top of your exposure so cvds basically it's not like with equities that it's a one-to-one -one ratio so if i have a one-to-one -one, then i would be paying full price okay so it's a hundred percent on the price that i'm paying um so that's how how equities work but cfds works a bit different so if i have two a, a leverage of two then i'll be paying 50 percent margin so it's 50 percent of the price okay if my leverage is five then it would be 20% that I'm paying of the original price, okay? Um, so the higher your leverage is, so let's say we had a leverage of 10, then my leverage, um, then my margin would be 10%. So I'm only paying 10% of the original price. So the higher this is, the lower my margin would be, okay? Um, so that also differs from bank to bank or institute to institute. So standard bank would be a, one to ten ratio f and b would be a one to five ratio i know ig markets for instance work with a margin so they won't work with a leverage you can work it out yourself if you really want to it's really easy to work out but um, ig markets for instance works with mostly a 30 percent margin sometimes a 35 percent margin on the original price okay but because uh let's say most of our clients trade through through standard bank and fmb um you would be able to find the leverage or the gearing ratio on their site it with fmb it's easy to work out what the leverage is so if i said okay my leverage is five all i do is i take my total cost divided by my required margin and that would give me what my leverage is okay but you'll see that obviously you'd be paying a little more than usual what than what a standard bank client would be paying because of the leverage being um, much lower, something like 2.6%, for instance, on APSA, okay, instead of a 78 
All right. So once you've made your decision on how many shares you want, what, and you've also entered your leverage, which you, which on um, Standard Bank is easy to find. FMB, you can work it out yourself. You can come over to the software, into your leverage over here. It will automatically calculate the margin. You just enter your amount of shares, and then you can either click open long or open short position. So in this case, it would be open long position. So I'm just going to do test, and then I'm going to say open long. So obviously, your comment needs to be... Um, you need to keep your comments to the rules. Okay, so still technical and fundamental reasons why you're buying the shares. Um, so always go and read up on the T's and C's for the CFD. All right, there's two sets of uh, T's and C's, one for simulation and one for your CFD account. So always see to it that you put in the, a decent comment. So once again, technical or fundamental. So two technical reasons or two fundamental reasons or one technical plus one fundamental. So once you've entered your comment, you can just say open long position because it told us to open long position. And then we can go back to our trader dashboard, which the share will be on the trader dashboard right at the bottom. So it's so ABG long, 100 shares. The unit costs that we paid, the margin. So the margin that we that we paid was two thousand nine hundred twenty four rand and sixty cents. The current price of the share, today's movement, overall movement. So today's movement will obviously not be one hundred eighty five rand. That's eight rand. Oh, that's one rand, one rand eighty five. Okay. So ignore the the decimal. Um, overall movement. Um, basically your overall movement in rand value up or down so that would be correct for instance seven and 44 so it will tell you for instance like one if you moved up let's say one rand it will say 1.00 and then the profits are lost so, so currently we are in a loss because of the brokerage so 50 rand brokerage and then your action button which you can go and set up your stop losses so you can go to set stop loss or target value set up your target let's say 10 percent on my target but with a stop loss of five okay don't risk more than seven percent on a cd with your trades okay so once you've selected your um your your target value and stop loss you can just update values now currently there is no sms notification around that and also the shares do not sell themselves so they are currently busy with the system with where, uh, where um, it will send you sms notification once you've reached your target or your stop loss same as with the investment dashboard okay so let's say for instance you wanted to go and sell the share all right so easy way to do that once again you go to action on your right hand side and then just click on close position once you've clicked on close position, it will automatically have the amount of shares, okay? And then you just enter your comment. So once again, either technical or a fundamental reason. So, but this time, instead of two reasons, it can be one reason. So for instance, your stop loss has been reached or your target value has been reached, okay? Or you went and you looked at the chart and you saw something on the charting. So then you enter your comment. So let's say, for instance, test, and then once again, click on close position. So there's no other sell button. Just click on close position and it will close that position and take the share away. Okay. Um, so then it will go and lie underneath your accounts and then your financials. So underneath financials, that's where you will find your financial state, basically your financial statements, of all, all the shares that you've bought and sold on your um, CEB account. Okay. So the main focus is basically the share track and 2020 advisor which assists you in telling you in what in which direction the share is currently heading to is it heading in a upwards direction which would be a long or is it heading in a downwards direction which is a short so the long and the short doesn't tell you short term or long term it's just the direction all right so long would be upwards and then short would be downwards and you can trade on both directions on cvs up and down so people sometimes ask but how is it possible that you can make money with trading short reason being is it's the same thing as if you're trading uh, forex with forex you can do the exact same thing you can trade in a bullish or a bearish trend so you can either open a buy position on a cfd or on a forex trade or open a sell position on a forex trade so for instance if i open a, a let's say a short position on um, the German 30, for instance, or the US dollar versus the JPY, and the share price started to drop, and I, I open a sell position, means that I would be making money in that downwards direction. But if it turned against me and it went up, then I would be losing money, okay, instead in, instead of gaining money. When I, If I open a buy position, which is a long, 
um, and the share price goes up, then I would be making money. But the moment the share price starts dropping, then I would be losing money. Okay, so that's a normal situation. But a sell order, if the price starts to go up, then you would be losing. Okay, you want the share price to go down. So you're trading against the company and not for the company. Okay, so yeah, that's the basics of the Share Track and 2020 Advisor. If there is any extra questions around the Share Track and 2020 Advisor or you don't have the Share Track and 2020 Advisor, please send me email to rudy at sharetracking.com or contact us underneath Need Support. Um, send us a query. Um, or go to contact us and give us a call on any one of the support numbers or the office number or send us an email to info at sharetracking.com or support at sharetracking.com and then I would activate the sharetracking 2020 advisor for you. By this time, everyone should have the sharetracking 2020 advisor, but if not, please let me know and I can go and activate it for you. Okay, so next week i think what we'll do is we'll discuss the cfds so that you can exa understand exactly how the margins and leverages work um but for now that's it for the for for this session and then i'll see you guys um next week um next week month oh, yeah so sorry yeah sorry next week monday